concept of our film, All the Time in the World, was based around a pickpocket who steals a man's watch. The man who, whose watch he steals manages to track him down and attacks him to take it back. For this film, I took the role of scriptwriter. Within this role, I had various restrictions given to me within the brief. Uh, one of the restrictions that we found most challenging was only having six lines of dialogue. Uh, we overcame this in our film by visually constructing characters um, rather than using dialogue. We initially wanted to create a film which ended in a twist. On the other hand, we also wanted to relate it to the title and have it tie in with the theme of time. We ended up trying to blend these ideas and had an almost unexpected ending and related it to time by him stealing his watch. A film which inspired me was Attack the Block. I wanted to do a film about London and the rising crime rate within it. In Attack the Block, they established characters at the start with a young boy's mugger woman that lives in their tower block. I blended this idea with Oliver Twist and the idea that people that are rejected from society have to turn to stealing to get by. I wanted to create this idea of the youth crime as we see it as a growing media story, the knife crime rising in London. Um, I didn't want to use it directly though because we still wanted it related to the title of um, all the time in the world. When I was given the brief that the film had to be focused around, around world building, I looked at the work of Bordwell and Thompson and the idea of fabula and suja. So the fabula is a story which is not what you explicitly see but what you can infer from what you do see and the suja is the plot so it's what you actually see uh, in the film. When I was writing the script I wanted to write parts in which could be inferred about the characters. In the film there were two main characters and I wanted to construct them as polar opposites. Harvey was, was supposed to represent the youth urban London which we see in the news. This was constructed with costumes such as tracksuits and trainers. This appeared to work in our film as we won the award for best performance so it must have looked realistic. On the other hand our other character was supposed to be represented as a self-made businessman who had come from a similar life to bring himself into a better lifestyle. Um, however as we were unable to hire actors this meant that the student had to stand in um, so we didn't quite get the same effect that we were after. Um, this was also anchored by the fact that we didn't have the correct costume. So we kind of lost the relationship between the fabula and the, the suja. So the plot didn't fully represent the story. In addition to this, in their book, Film, Art and Introduction, they said that the narrative is often driven by an object or person as an objective or goal. In this case, the watch acts as the incentive for the characters. The watch itself drives the plot and is actually used to represent the common goal of capitalist society, which is wealth. After we had come up with the idea for the film as a group, a large amount of the story was left to me, as a scriptwriter. When I was writing the story, I wanted to focus mainly on the character exposition in the short film, in which we were only allowed six lines of narrative. For example, we use a montage to show Andrew getting ready, showing that he was wearing his shirt and his watch to represent that he was well off. We also use an asynchronous narrative, starting with the end of the story and then cutting between the two parallel lines of narrative for the boy ceiling and the man getting ready. Um, I found this was a strength of our story as it allowed us to keep within the strictions put in place. Um, however, we didn't follow a linear narrative uh, with the Hollywood structure, which meant that we did lose some of the strength of the story. And if I could do it again, I would probably try and keep to a more linear structure, however that, would, that could mean that we wouldn't be able to fit to the restrictions. Overall I think the film went well, I think it was edited really well together, some of the cuts were really visually pleasing. I also think the, the construction of the main character went really well. Uh, I also think from this film that we learned that we really need to plan everything in advance and have a really detailed shot list before we could begin shooting. We also would have to work on the physical construction of the room. This film lacked actors, and the set construction of the room didn't really fit the character. The room was red, which had little relation to the story, and actually wasn't in, written in the script. And if we had properly prepared for the film, then we would have been able to make everything fit the story. For the planning of this, I read the book Save the Cat. The thing that I took from this book was the idea of a logline, where you sum up your story in a sentence um, before you start writing it. And this helps when you're writing, because it means you can understand where your story's going and it helps it to flow better. Um, I feel like our story could have been more culturally engaging um, by using real life clips, clips of, of crime and relating it to 
our film. So I think we had a good idea which was well executed uh, with the re restrictions put in place, but I think with a more detailed planning we could have had a better film. For our second film, Vacancy, I took on the role as producer. The story of the film is a young woman that goes for a job at a B&B. I need to find out that the owners aren't actually as nice as she initially thinks and they're actually trying to kill her. Um, there was very few restrictions for this film which allowed us to be quite creative with our ideas and how we represented it. Uh, when we were coming up with the idea, um, I had many meetings with the writer and the director and we looked at scripts that the writer had already done and other films including Get Out by Jordan Peele. One theory which I think applies to our work is Bart's narrative codes. We constructed a symptomatic relationship to build tension. We used a hermeneutic code using a notepad with Maureen writing on. This creates mystery as is unclear to the audience what the significance of this is. It relates to the stigmatic relationship and through Chekhov's gun we see it later when Alice pulls it out from under the bed. Alice has previously found a shoe under the bed. This symbolic code represents the last mate as it was previously missing from the uniform that Maurice gives Alice. After finding this, we then see an action code of her getting up and packing her clothes, showing the non-verbal communication as panicking. This signomatic relationship shows a realisation of the situation she is in, and that she is in danger. Within my role, I mainly found myself guiding the writer and the director, kind of steering them away from gore and trying to go towards more of a thriller film, such as Get Out that I mentioned earlier. I read the director hadn't seen the film, so I advised her to watch it and look at how they use characters in their film, and to try and bring that into our story. For example, the family who are antagonists in Get Out act overly friendly and talk in a similar way. This creates a sense of unease and a sense of foreboding for the main character. Oh no, it's cool, I was just confused. Well, I can assure you, there was no funny business. We also went over the script many times, changing parts such as a conversation which originally went on for too long. I think what went well in my role was the organisation of locations and actors for the film. I'd already filmed in a location before, so I knew it would be appropriate for a horror film. I found actors from the local area, um, from theatre groups and people that I'd already worked with in the past and made sure that I selected the people that I thought would fit the roles. The biggest weakness in my role was that I didn't have enough communication with the DOP about how we wanted the film to look, and this meant that the outcome of the film was restricted in how well it could have been. Furthermore, I found when we were shooting the film, the schedule didn't allow enough time for each scene, which meant that some parts of the story didn't flow well, as we didn't have enough time to shoot shots to connect the scenes. Uh, if I was to do this again, I would have liked to have done test shots on the previous day, um, so I could have got an idea of how long it would take us, and then I could have written a more realistic schedule and we would have had, had time to get everything done. This film, I think our main advantage was the story, and we'd researched into various other horror scripts, which gave us an advantage when we were coming up with our one. We also had a good location, which was inspired by many horror films, like Insidious and The Exorcist. I think this was anchored by actors whose appearance was exactly how we'd planned it. On the other hand, I feel like the film lacked proper planning when it came to shots and lighting. This meant we often had shaky camera and the generic shots with little meaning behind them. For example, the frame of, framing of Alice in the conversation at the start, there is a low angle shot looking up at her, which would usually show that he had power, where in the film she's supposed to be the one in danger. I also found that the lighting of the film took away from the tension. If we were to do this again, I'd like to have more meetings with the director and the DOP to enforce that the shot list needed to be done earlier and to discuss how it was going to look with lighting, such as lighting the characters' faces rather than lighting the room. I think my role as a producer has helped me improve my storytelling. It allowed me to take a step back from being too creative on the film and that means I could steer them in the right direction and not let them go off track, which in the future when I'm going to be writing or directing it means that I'll have the idea that I can step back and just see where this is going rather than rushing into stuff. And overall I think this film was let down by the lack of planning uh, with the cinematography but I think it was still positive and had good locations and actors in it.